Hi, uh, in this video I'll talk about rope tension. It's part two of my video. In part one I had spoken about stationary masses. Here the ball and block are accelerating which makes it a complicated case. The ball is accelerating downwards, it's pulling the block up that plane and the rope acts as a medium of transmitting the force. The forces are all shown as arrows. First thing we have to do is to resolve the forces. On the block side, the mg acts downwards, so its component which is pressing on the plane becomes mg cos theta, the plane pushes back on the block, that becomes normal reaction mg cos theta, and therefore the friction force which acts opposite direction of motion becomes mu into normal reaction. The perpendicular of that small triangle is mg sin theta, and you can see that placed above as a red arrow. So mg sin theta and mu n are dragging the block back. On the ball side, the big mg is acting downwards and the rope tension is acting upwards. Now since the ball and the block are moving together, we have to consider both of them as a system. So m plus m together is having an acceleration a. So m plus m into a becomes a new thing called the net force. Now before we move on, we should understand what's a. a is acceleration of that ball and that's exactly the same as the acceleration of that block, m. That's why we say that m plus m have a common acceleration, a. That's very important to understand. That's because the rope can't become any longer or shorter. So if the ball moves a bit, the block also has to move an equal bit. So let's put some values uh, to make sense out of the whole thing. So the ball, let it have a mass of 10 kg. Let the block also have a mass of 10 kg and let's see what happens. The ball will have a vertically downward weight equal to mg is 98 newton. The block will have a rearward force of mg sin theta which is 49 newton and the frictional force which is 0.1 out of the normal reaction so that will be 8.5 newton. So the net force which is acting on the whole system of the block and ball together is 98 minus the rearward forces that comes to 40.5 take that value of that net force divided by the total mass which is 10 plus 10 20 kg and we get the acceleration this is the only way to find the acceleration of the whole system so that comes to 2.025 meters per second square having done that we hold on to that acceleration value and we can find the tension in the rope so draw a free body diagram now so you can see that the rope is upwards it's pulling on the ball the ball has got a weight down but since the ball and the rope are moving down, it means that the downward forces are more than the upward forces. So simply put that equation, downward mg minus the upward t is equal to the downward ma, shown by the green arrow. And then you will get the correct value, which is 77.75 Newton. This is a simpler way to do this than to worry about all the positive and negative signs and so on. Now let's now confirm whether our calculation is correct or not by doing it another way using the block. The block is moving upwards, it means that the rope is pulling on it with a tension T which is stronger than the rearward forces which are 49 plus 8.5. So put the same equation, we use our common sense, so upward T minus the rearward 57.5 must be equal to the force on the block which is small m into A which is 10 into A. When you do that, we get T is equal to 77.75 Newton, exactly the same as before. It also proves that the tension in the rope is constant throughout. Having confirmed our way of calculation, let's now move to a situation where the block is so strong that the block slides down the plane and pulls the ball upwards. So for that, we have to adjust the masses, of course. All other things remain the same except friction because if the ball now starts sliding down on the plane then the friction will be opposite the direction of motion so it will be up on the plane. You can see the yellow arrow which talks about F is equal to mu into normal reaction. Now the net force also changes so the strongest guy is mg sin theta so you have to subtract the weaker guys with minus mu n minus t. The concept of acceleration remains the same. Now let's put some values to make sense out of the whole thing. So let the uh, ball be 10 kg mass as before and let's put 20 kg to the block. Now even with that 20 kg block you can see that the mg sin theta 
works out exactly to 98 Newton. So it's not stronger than the ball's weight, which is downward 98 Newton. So all the forces seem to be balanced and there won't be any motion. The ball will not accelerate at all. If the ball doesn't move, then there won't be any friction, so I've removed friction from this catch. So one follows the other, and we can see that in this case, the things are all stationary, then Newton's first law will apply in fact, and then the tension T will be equal to 98 Newton, the weight of the ball. Now let's put a higher weight to the block. So we have made it now 30 kg, as you can see on that sketch. Now that's pretty heavy. So the mg sine theta component downwards becomes 147 Newton. Now is that stronger than everybody else? And let's see. So the friction component will be mu into normal reaction. Normal reactions also become stronger now. So 0.1 into 254.6 is 25.4 roughly. So if you do 147 minus 25.4 minus 98 Newton, which is the weight of the ball hanging at the other end, you get a net force down the plane of 23.6 Newton. Divide this net force by the total mass, 10 plus 10, 20 kg, and you get 1.18 meters per second square as the acceleration of the system. Now, we break it into a localized part of that system, and we do the same thing that we did before. If you draw a free body diagram of the ball, and the ball is moving up, mind you, the upward tension force of the rope is obviously stronger than the downward weight of the ball. Otherwise, it would not have moved upwards. So T minus mg must be equal to m into a. Using that logic, we can find T as 109.8 Newton in this particular case. So we use the same logic of the localized net force, which must be in the same direction as the motion. ma should not be pointing downwards when the ball is moving upwards. In summary, let's look at the free body diagram once again. When everything is at rest, the tension T of the rope is equal to the weight mg of the ball. The net force of the system is zero. The acceleration is zero. So the acceleration of the ball and the block is also zero. When the ball is accelerating upwards, the T is bigger, so T drags mg upwards. So T minus mg must be equal to ma. That's how we do the free body diagrams. I hope this uh, video was useful to you. Thanks and have a great day.